Welcome back to Indian Mission. Today, we're going to be having a very fun and interesting repair and restoration project. If you want to see more, well, you're already going to, as long as you stick with the video. So actually what you see here is not six onyx pieces. Well that's true, you do see that. But what this is, is an onyx column. But the problem here is not that it's not in one piece. That can be solved. But what is the problem is this is supposed to be in one piece. I'm assuming that it probably fell from somewhere or it got cracked for any reason. But what I do know is that it did get cracked. I don't know, it probably fell from somewhere. As you can see, this piece of the pedestal is quite broken because well, it's fully in half. I've seen some of them that are about half broken, quarter broken, or even less than that. So I have to return this into this beautifully assembled on this column. The thing is, it's not exactly the same column. It's made of the same material. It's going to look a tiny bit different because of stone, you can't find the same kind of stone. I mean, you can get the same kind of green onyx from the same quarry, but it's not going to look identical. It may look very close. So what I'm trying to explain is that that broken piece is going to look something that look just like that when it's finished. And the thing is that this video is just only a segment of what the restoration is going to be, because if we do it all in one video, I think you're probably going to get it bored. Because all oh, if it's going to be together, I heard it's going to take something like two hours. So let's go back to work area, and now we're going to be there in the handyman clap. The handyman clap is here, so I must be here. So now I'm going to be team of our prayer. As you can already see, we are going to be using good epoxy. And if you watch my other videos, you will notice that I use the same epoxy. So we're going to be using this epoxy because it has its high strength, and it can go to 3,000 psi. So that means if I put my pressure washer over it, it would break, but barely. Yeah. So this is actually for professional use, and it's a two-part epoxy, if you can tell. Because I'll, then why would there be two bottles if it's a one-part epoxy, right? The epoxy is perfect for putting the sewing material together because it says it on the box. And well, I trust the box, right? Who doesn't trust the box? So now we're gonna prepare the work surface and the tools so that we can get gluing. So now I'm briefly going to go over the tools we're going to be using. The most important component is obviously the epoxy. I call the epoxy our heroes. We have our epoxy resiner, resin and our hardener. Now what I noticed is the hardener is yellow, but I think everyone noticed. But what I think you did notice is that the back of the hardener is orange and the one from the resin is red. I don't know why. Maybe they did that on purpose. Maybe it was an accident. Doesn't matter. Because what does matter is that we get the hidden work done. Once we glue it together, we're boxing it together. We're going to need something to hold it. That's where our three clamps come in. And if you don't have them, you can buy the, the ones from Devolt, which I think you need to buy in Home Depot or somewhere. Yeah, correct. Also, you can also get the early brick, quick brick. It has bigger pads, and it's a bit bigger. But the thing is that it really depends on which one's a nicer. This is the first time in a while, but we have to rush. Because once we pour it, it sets in five minutes. So we're gonna have to go really fast. And not really gonna have a chance to talk with you. But the thing is that I'm gonna speed it up even more for you, so that you can be happy. It's very important that we get the same amount of epoxy for both coins, also known as one part resin, one nerd, one part hard nerd. So now we're about to get pouring. The interesting thing is that you have to pour the resin in before the hard nerd. Now we're ready to get started.
So now I have to mix it really fast so that I can get it mixed well. And I only have five minutes, so I also have to mix pretty fast because I also have to apply it fast. So now everything I have to do has to be pretty fast because, well, it's at five minutes. Five minutes isn't a lot of time. You might say it's enough time to do certain things, like it's enough time to have breakfast or something, but it's not enough time to do a hand to hand project. As you know, most of my videos are. 20 to an hour. I mean minutes. 20. Now I'm going to apply it evenly along the surface. So right now there isn't, I didn't make that much, so I can't really give a too thick of a coat. All I really can do is give a, a tiny, tiny coat everywhere. That's all I really need because I need a thin coat on both surfaces so it can bond evenly. Remember, you gotta do this pretty quick. So that's why I often like to tilt it on one side like this. Now also, if I had an extra hand, I would probably hold it. But humans are born with two hands only. So we can't really do that. Now certain areas, I gave a little too much or rolled in the areas that, that have too much. And remember, I got to do this quite fast because well, I can't do it any slower. That option, I would do it slower. Remember, I don't have an option to do it slower. So now I have very little left, which is kind of bad. Which means I might have to pour another coat or something. Or maybe make another batch. So I do not have enough pasta. I mean, epoxy. I, I don't know why I'm trying to say pasta. And evidently, I did make enough to only, only put on one side, and my batch is starting to set, which means I really gotta hurry up. Now, after I got it just right, because, well, can't you see it? It got exactly the correct map. Now it's okay if I get a little bit. Okay, so now it's starting to bond, and I have to really join it. So the way I would do it is I'm going to have to pick it up, and I'm going to have to put it together. Now I'm going to put it on the table. Now I'm going to slide these pieces together and I'm going to press them. Now the paper might not like it so I have to, might have to move this several bits like so. As you see where it broke, some pieces broke off and that will fix later. Now I do have to fix is that it's split. I have to keep it tight. Now the thing is there are things that are more convenient than a human clamp because there are real clamps. And we have them. And now I'm not ready to use them. So now we gotta start clamping. And I wanted to use it early in the hour first because it has the bigger pads. So what I gotta do is I gotta find make it slightly bigger and then I'll adjust it to the right size. So practically like this. And then I got now I'm going to quickly tighten it like that. See, I just got to press this gray button, and now it'll work with black or anything, but it might not always be gray or black, but most of them are. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do 
the same thing with the other two. So I got the other clamp with the DeWolf one and it well, has a thinner uh, pad and it will let me secure the middle as you can see. So this one is, this pad is holding the middle and this pad is just well, that thing just holding it on. But this pad is the one that's secured in the middle. After all, this is the bigger chunk. It will be different if the chunk would be somewhere here. It's right here. And this is the middle thing. It's going right near it. So, well, pretty obvious that this piece is bigger, but that's not what matters. What matters is that we fix this, make it a nice column, and that's we have fun in the process. And that you know how to do it, right? So now we're going to wet this epoxy, set and guard it for 24 hours, and I think you should watch the next part because this is the practically the end of part one. See those cracks? We cannot leave them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this special EV glue over here, right here, and these interesting colors. We're probably gonna use the ones that are yellow greenish, and we're gonna fill them. You're gonna see them in the next segment. So now we're gonna let this rest for 24 hours, and then in the next video we are going to restore this onyx. So now it's time to finish the video, and it's time to actually start just talking and not doing anything besides talking. So thank you for Dad for helping me uh, make the video, buying the, the, the Onyx uh, columns, and thank you for Dad for filming the video, helping me with edit and post-production and uploading it, and thank you for Dad for helping me say, uh, you need to mix the epoxy faster. And the things that didn't make it in the video. Thank you for Dad for teaching me how to do this. Thank you for Dad for buying me all the supplies. And thank you for Dad for letting this video be possible. Thank you for myself for being participating. Thank you for the claims for actually working off failing their warranty. And thank you for watching and bye. But don't forget to subscribe and like and the things that you normally should do. And here's one thing before I go. And I will go in just a couple seconds. It's time to wave to the camera. Bye!